Thank you for taking 10 for CNN 10. I'm Carl Azus from our remote studio outside the CNN Center. In fact, the reason why we're here is the subject of today's first report. The threat of coronavirus continues to lurk around the world. On Monday, the World Health Organization said the disease might have infected 10% of the global population. It's a controversial statement. It would mean that 770 million people on the planet had contracted the disease. Researchers at Johns Hopkins University have tallied 35 million infections worldwide. But the United Nations says that's probably an enormous undercount. And one ongoing challenge in diagnosing coronavirus is that an estimated 40% of people who catch it have no symptoms. So many may never know if they've had it or get tested for it. COVID-19 is not spread evenly around the world. We've reported on how there were fewer cases and deaths on the continent of Africa than researchers had expected. And while some countries like New Zealand are lifting restrictions after saying coronavirus is under control, others are shutting down businesses and locking things down again because case numbers are going in the wrong direction. France reported almost 17,000 positive tests on Saturday. That was a new one-day record there, and officials were considering putting Paris on lockdown. Germany and Italy recently recorded their biggest one-day spikes in positive tests since April, and the United Kingdom and Poland are also seeing their numbers increase. It's creating major challenges for world leaders. They're trying to find ways to keep people from spreading COVID-19 while also allowing them to have some sense of normalcy. Lockdowns can also be damaging to local and national economies. In the United States, U.S. President Donald Trump left the hospital yesterday. He returned to the White House after being treated for coronavirus at Walter Reed National Military Medical Center. On the other side of the country, California has seen the highest number of coronavirus cases. More than 834,000 have been recorded there. But New York has had the most deaths blamed on the disease. And certain parts of New York City are facing lockdowns once again. After months of steps forward in this city's battle against the pandemic, a sign on Sunday that there could be a very big step back. The mayor proposing nine zip codes in Brooklyn and Queens return to the kinds of lockdowns that we saw back in April. Schools closed, non-essential businesses closed. The idea is to try to combat a rising infection rate in those neighborhoods. Seven consecutive days of a 3% infection rate or higher now. And in 11 other zip codes, new lockdowns involving public gathering places like gyms and pools and a closing down of indoor dining, which was just recently reopened here. The mayor said there's been a lot to celebrate in New York for the past few months, but Sunday was not one of those days. So today, unfortunately, is not a day for celebration. Today is a more difficult day, and I'm going to be giving an update uh, that gives me no joy at all. In fact, it pains me to be putting forward this approach that we'll need. But in some parts of our city, in Brooklyn and Queens, we're having an extraordinary problem, something we haven't seen uh, since the spring. All of these proposals have to go through the governor's office. And CNN reached out to the governor, and we haven't heard back yet exactly what he plans to do with the mayor's proposals. But we did hear that he pointed to previous statements where he said if a city can't control its outbreak, the state will step in. Yesterday was the first Monday in October. You're like, thanks, Carl. Well, that's significant because it's when the U.S. Supreme Court officially begins a new session. And the fact that it has a vacancy following the death of Associate Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg doesn't stop the court from hearing arguments or making decisions. One case on the docket this session concerns the Affordable Care Act, also known as Obamacare, a major health reform law passed in 2010. Another case involves laws against discrimination and the issue of religious freedom. Also, if a legal dispute comes up related to the U.S. presidential election on November 3rd, the court could be called on to resolve that too, like it did in the election of the year 2000. There is a complication for the court at the moment. It currently has eight justices until the vacancy is filled. That means that rulings that end in a tie are possible if four justices decide a case one way and four decide the other. If that happens, whatever decision was made by a lower court before the case was appealed to the Supreme Court would stand. So when will the vacancy be filled? That is the question. Judge Amy Coney Barrett is President Trump's nominee to fill the seat, and her confirmation hearings are scheduled to begin next week, though those too have been complicated. Several senators have caught coronavirus and may have to attend the hearings virtually. 
Democrats in the chamber want the hearings to be postponed. The Republicans who lead the Senate are hoping to move quickly and hold a vote on Judge Barrett's confirmation by the end of the month. But if she's confirmed then, it doesn't necessarily mean she'd be the tie-breaking vote on any split decision. In order for a justice to rule on a Supreme Court case, he or she has to be confirmed and sitting on the bench when the case itself arrives. So if the court takes up a challenge before the new justice is seated, it'll be up to the other eight justices to decide it. 10 second trivia. Who was a recipient of the first Nobel Peace Prize? Henri Dunant, Theodore Roosevelt, Clara Barton, or Woodrow Wilson? One of the two people who received the 1901 prize was Henri Dunant, and this year's winners are announced this week. Nobel Prizes are named for a Swedish engineer who invented dynamite, and in 1895, he created the awards for those who serve humanity. A well-known award is for peace, but there are also Nobel Prizes for economics, physics, literature, chemistry, and medicine. Hundreds of awards have been given over the last century. They're handed out on December 10th on the anniversary of Alfred Nobel's death, though the winners are announced before then. There could be as many as three winners per category, and some people have won more than one Nobel Prize. Marie Curie, for instance, the first woman to win, took home awards for chemistry and physics. The International Committee of the Red Cross won the Nobel Peace Prize three times in 1917, 1944, and 1963. And it's not just a medal that these people or organizations win. A diploma and a cash prize are included, the payment being worth more than a million dollars today. Nothing unusual about this scene except that I've got my co-anchor with me. But what if, instead of my friend Henry here, the dog I had were yellow, completely hairless, and completely robotic? Then there might be some questions. And that's what's happening wherever Boston Dynamics robot dog is being sighted. Jeannie Most takes a walk. Oh my phone! Bruh. It was a robo dog video. Oh Hello, friends. That had the internet both barking and wagging its tail. I thought it was a little bit creepy, but I was excited to see it because I've never seen a robot in real life. Oh, oh my god! I love you! Instead of a leash, it was handled by a guy with a controller. And he said that it was for a job. So um, we told him he had a pretty good job, I guess. Walking Spot, the Boston Dynamics robo dog that's been spotted lately. For your own safety and for those around you, please stand at least one meter apart. Telling people in a Singapore park to maintain social distance. The founder of Boston Dynamics told CNBC. Uh, we have about 120 out in the world. Stephen Colbert noticed Spot. People would be a lot more receptive if the dog was cuter cuddlier and less dystopian. Like Steven's dog? Here's the Benny bot. There it is. Boston Dynamics is making Spot cuddlier by showing robo dogs dancing, working together, working out together. The Massachusetts State Police bomb squad tested Spot. SpaceX has one, sighted amid clouds of liquid nitrogen. Will Spot become the future rover on Mars? After years of being taunted with a hockey stick, kicked to demonstrate the ability to recover, and even being yanked. By the equivalent of its tail, Spot still persevered. Intended mostly for industrial use, Spot now sells for $74,500. The company warns Spot is not certified safe for in-home use, or intended for use near children, you can expect to be hounded. Dude, Spot, you are amazing. Buy more Spot sightings. See Spot trot. I love you so much. Ginny Mos, CNN, New York. Technology buffs lot that stuff up. But it's hardly a lap dog. Oh sure, it might fake a lap, take a lap, or obey like a Labrador, but it's a rover man, not a Doberman. And while it's a newfound land of technology, true dog lovers won't settle for what's Pomeranian unacceptable. Woo! I'm Carl Azus. Yesterday, we made a stop in Abu Dhabi. Today, we're headed to Stockholm, the capital of Sweden, where the International English School is watching. Thank you for your comment at youtube.com slash CNN.